In this video, I want to talk about eliminating lighting and things that are in your shot that you need to remove and you kind of knew they were going to be in the shot when you took the picture and some of the problems you can run into when you're doing this against dark or black backgrounds. So to show you this, I've got this shot I took of this uh, layer statue here and you can see I've got this light in shot which is spilling a bit of blue over her legs here. There's also a kind of rim light just out of shot here. And then also at the edges you can see where the whole scene's kind of being uh, illuminated with two opposing kind of key lights either side. So all of that I want to take out of the shot. Now the approach a lot of people would take is to use various techniques to get rid of these. Um, the worst of these being to simply sample an area of uh, the darker color here and, and paint over the top of them. So that would just be using the sort of sample tool then going to brush and sort of going, you know, let's, let's paint over the top. Oh, take my flow up. And that will certainly appear to do the job on face value but uh, that's gonna leave you with a lot of problems. So then the next thing people sort of try is to use the, use the clone stamp where they're saying, okay, I realize if I just paint over this with black, I'm gonna be introducing this kind of solid color that is gonna be at odds with the rest of the photo. So we'll try a bit of clone stamp and we'll use a nice big area like this where you, know, you can paint from there and mask it over. And you know, that works and you've, you're preserving sort of some of the texture and um, you know, knocking out those parts like that. Uh, I won't go any further. Maybe we'll just take that bit of the top out. And you think you're done. Um, so I could go on, do color grading, dodging and burning, all my usual sort of stuff to this image. But the problem comes when you get your work in print or see it on different screens and lots of issues start to crop up that you don't see when you're doing the editing. I know when I look at images on smartphones, especially iPhones, the uh, screens are usually sort of much brighter. They, they bring out the sort of a contrast in the blacks and make them a lot brighter so they expose a lot of the detail that you typically won't see on screen when you're working on your laptop or you know computer and doing this kind of editing. Uh, equally equally if you're going to print and getting anything printed professionally, you know, books, photos, they will really expose the flaws. So it's worth understanding what you're doing in these dark darker areas and how that's going to end up affecting your work later on down the line. Now the way I deal with this is to kind of get out of the dark so to speak. So what I do is I temporarily kind of lighten everything so I can see the effect of some of the work I'm doing and then choose kind of appropriate strategies uh, to deal with the task at hand. The way I do that is simply with a curves or a levels adjustment layer. It doesn't really matter which you choose, but the idea is the same in both, which is to simply raise up the brightness of the entire image so you can see what is going on in the darker areas. So, you know, I don't need to worry about what this curves layer is doing to the overall image because I'm gonna just delete this at the end when we're done. But now I've done this, you can start seeing the effect of what I just did with that clone stamping. So immediately you can see a few problems. So first when I clone stamped out that rim light at the top, you can still see there's streaks of flaring that it's left on the screen. Uh, that's one problem. The next problem is this kind of line, which is actually a crease in the backdrop I used in this shoot. Uh, and you can see it's kind of going across the whole picture behind her head. Um, but where I've used the clone stamp here, not only have I kind of erased it there, but I've cloned that line and the flare up here, over here, over here. All of this would show up, it would be subtle, but all of this would show up in print and you'd probably see this on a smartphone as well. Along with that, you can also see I've got um, just a general kind of change in tonality across this um, backdrop. Some uh, parts it's a little bit lighter, some parts it's darker. Obviously with it turned off, none of that's visible, but with it turned on, that is visible. 
So you're gonna wanna pick different strategies to address these. And essentially the strategies you use are no different from if you were doing retouching on the, I suppose, normally exposed areas of your main subject um, that you're treating. Because what you wanna end up with is a kind of background that is realistic and doesn't have these obvious flaws and obvious sloppy kind of retouching approaches in them, uh, which kind of gives away that you've done uh, digital work on this, which is what, which is not what we want. So there's a couple of strategies you can use to deal with issues like this, uh, which I'll talk about now. The first is to just simply be aware of these sort of textured areas and work with them if you're gonna do something kind of brute force like the clone stamp. So if I grab this um, sort of fix layer I've got here and just delete everything on it and sort of start from scratch, what I can now do is pick better areas to sample from. So I might use a smaller brush and notice when I'm uh, doing this clone stamping, I've got a separate layer and in the clone stamp options, I've got sample current and below. So what that does is it brings up the layer from below and, and paints it over the top. That means I don't ever make any destructive changes to the background layer. It just means all the fixes are applied on this layer. Um, and then when I'm happy with them, I could merge that back if I wished. So with our light up here, you know, is that the first thing I'm gonna work on? I'm not sure. What I might do is try and take this light out over here, but just more carefully kind of paint across from the other side. So it kind of maintains the tone of the color around it. And you can see a sort of pattern started to appear there. So then I might sample down from here paint over the top. You can see I'm introducing color changes. I'm not gonna worry about that too much at the moment. Um, you know, you don't have to be mega perfect, but it just helps to be aware of this stuff. So now I've kind of got this um, area paintable, so to speak. I can sample there and then start to paint out the white on that side. And, you know, it's a little muddy. I'm obviously doing this um, fairly sloppily, but, uh, you know, it's okay. With that kind of line going across, I could take a smaller brush, maybe about there, and just carefully paint across to kind of eliminate that. We'll try it, other, try it again so we don't go towards the, the edge there. With the flare up here, what do we want to do? Maybe we'll sample from this side and then I can kind of knock that out up there. Too big. This kind of approach so obviously I'm running to difficulties now, so I need to think about other approaches. So another one is simply to look at the healing brush. The healing brush will still operate even at this kind of low level of luminosity. So, you know, I can pick up parts that I've created these sort of tonal shifts in, paint over the top of them, see what the healing brush does. The other thing you can look at is to look at frequency separation, which would shift the texture into one layer and all the kind of color tones into another, and then that would en enable me to eliminate the flare, but keep all the kind of texture in the background. Um, and that's often a good way to deal with issues like these. Beyond the scope of this tutorial, I'll make another tutorial on the channel to deal with that, uh, to show that, um, but it's that kind of approach. So that's one level of dealing with this. Then the other thing I could do is just look at kind of affecting the general brightness of the background layer with an adjustment layer. So now I've got this kind of masked area which has taken out lights and things. What I might want to do is put on, say, curves layer 
maybe darken things up a bit. Then I'm going to fill that curves layer with black and then paint back on this lighter side of the image. Oh, B for brush tool, make that a bit bigger. And then that will just ensure that that lighter side starts to match the darker side over here. Again, we can go over areas like this. And if you overdo it, you can always come back to the curves adjustment layer, play around with the values here, etc., etc. You might want to add hue saturation layers as well to take the saturation down in your background and give you that kind of control. So at this point, I've done a rough kind of treatment of this. So let's turn our curves layer off and see what it looks like. So obviously no real visible change. Obviously I've made changes at the back, but you can't see them uh, now the image is re returned to its kind of normal exposure. If I just turn both these layers off, what I want to check is that I haven't ended up affecting uh, the statue in any way. So what you might want to do after you've done this kind of thing is to get a brush medium to strong hardness and uh, in the case of our cloned layer here, I would probably want to hit the delete actually, uh, the uh, eraser, and just go around the edges to ensure nothing's kind of spilled over onto the statue. And equally with the curves adjustment there, which made this side of the uh, image darker, we'd want to paint back on that with black I can go over those edges again and just make sure there's nothing kind of feathered in um, which would affect the tonality of that. So that's the general approach. Uh, this may not seem like work that's worth doing important, but I guarantee the first time you take one of these kind of images to print or see it on a phone, you'll start seeing these flaws show up uh, and you'll realize kind of what a wrecked image you've got um, in terms of the quality of it. They just don't stand up to scrutiny unless you treat your background area with the same kind of care you would treat your foreground area uh, when you've got a dark background like this. So a few tips there. I hope you found this useful. Um, obviously there's more detail to retouching techniques like frequency separation as well. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty of other tutorials that go into these concepts in a lot more detail. So make sure you subscribe and also visit us at Toyshooter at www.toyshooter.com. You can sign up for a newsletter, grab our free toy photography guide, uh, and I'll see you in the next video.